Welcome to Lady Audacity. I'm Alex. And I'm Amanda. And it feels good to be back doing episodes for the main feed. (laughs) It feels very, very good. Yes. We took a couple, oh gosh, probably months. um, Because the Royals (laughs) took a couple months. (laughs) We've been focusing on some behind the scenes stuff. We've been reorganizing. We've also been putting out content on our Patreon. So this is a plug. If you're not yet a patron, head on over there. The link will be in the episode description. It's a fun time. Obviously, over there, we're behind a paywall, so we are a little more unfiltered. The takes are a little hotter. The tea is a little steamier. Um, we are wrapping up our feud series where we've been discussing royal feuds of the past and the present. Uh, what we think of them, what the public thinks of them. And it's just an all around really good time. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, Definitely, definitely a highlight too on the tea there. We posted some tea on there on the Patreon behind the paywall that we've never yes. talked about elsewhere. Yeah. So come join, come yeah. hither. <laughs> yeah. And if you, you know, if you're not able to become a patron right now on a paid subscription, there is a free option. So you get episodes early. And if that's not your style and you still want to support the show, please give us a nice rating or a review. Tell a friend who needs like some royal dishing in their life um yes. we do it all so yes to keep up on the hot takes yeah and what's going on <laughs> and we're so excited i hope you guys have missed this but we're getting into a banana article <laughs> what a and our boy article. tommy our boy yeah. tom sykes tommy tommy has came out as usual swinging i don't know if we are William friends, love him more, but I honestly think it's William's friends. <laughs> I don't know, Alex. It might be you. Every time there's a new Tom Sykes article, like I don't even have to go on the Daily Beast website to see it because I know you're going to send it to me. <laughs> yes, it's so true. I just, <laughs> this guy gets the tea and I respect the fact that he's open about like, I literally just like go out to tea or go out to the pub and I get all my info and he's a shady little bitch. He's a shady little bitch, which you will see in this newest article. He works for the daily beast, which is an American um, tabloid. So, which Mm -hmm. is also really interesting. And yeah, they must love him because the Windsors, William, Kate, all their friends and their courtiers are talking to him. Mm -hmm. So for this news article, for a banana article, he says, Prince Harry urged to apologize for cocaine use during Columbia trip. So you'll never guess who is urging him to apologize. Because this almost makes it seem like when you read that headline, like maybe from someone in Columbia, an important figure in Columbia is asking. Right. Or like an advocacy group or something. Exactly. Something like that. Because if you guys remember. That would make sense. That would make, and that would make sense because Harry admitted in spare that he did a line of coke when he was 17. I'm going to be straight up with you all. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) Harry and William were parting and Kate were parting in the early 2000s in the UK. I doubt cocaine use happened one time. But right. that's all allegedly. I, okay. I'm like almost <laughs> 30 years old and a real like learning experience for me has been just realizing how prevalent that is like in oh, the social scene. Totally. And it's coming yeah. back into vogue. I mean, like it's brat summer. Like what do, yeah, <laughs> what do we nature. think she's singing about in some of these Egg, tracks? Thank okay. You. Like that was, Um, I was in my early 20s. In, gosh, when was I in my early 20s? 2013, 2015. And I was constantly like, no thanks. No thank yeah, you. I'm good, the early actually. 2000s, Paris yeah. Hilton, Britney Spears. I mean, William was like literally partying with those girls at one point, okay? But right. that's all allegedly. But Harry did admit to one time use when he was 17. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> this is, but you guys want to know who's telling him to apologize? Well, we're going to read directly from the article. A friend of Prince William has told the Daily Peace that Prince Harry should apologize for taking cocaine as a young man on his and, and wife Meghan Markle's forthcoming tour of Columbia due to begin Thursday. 
The friend said, Harry admitted to doing coke in his book, Spare. His trip to Colombia should include an admission that the country has been destroyed by narco-terrorists serv- servicing wealthy drug users in the West, and he should stand up and apologize for his own participation in that disgusting trade. That would be a so, helpful intervention. <laughs> I need to know, what's the plan for this? Is this like... As soon as we land and we're like meeting the vice president, <laughs> is Harry supposed to stand there and be like, hey, I just need everyone to know really quick. I'm sorry for this. Or is it spo- is he supposed to that save line of it? Coke. Is he supposed to save it for like the middle of a, because they're not addressing j- drug use on this trip. So like, when is this supposed to come up is like my question. Well, exactly. And I think it's very, from everything we're getting about the Columbia trip, it's very obvious Columbia is excited about this trip that such yeah. high profile figures can finally shed a spotlight in, on Colombia that isn't about drugs in Colombia. It's right. very pointed that they want the country to be talked about outside of that. Yes. They want and- it to be about their culture and diversity and how they're on the forefront of fighting things like cyberbullying and mental health um, awareness right. when it comes to their youth and women like climate change so, things like that yeah but the british press is just trying to make the entire thing about drugs yes <laughs> it's just yes i don't know it's just hilarious now that william's friend is trying to make it seem like harry was the sole rich kid <laughs> doing yeah. lines on the dance floor and i mean it's really just another way of like bringing the conversation back to spare and making it sound like Harry aired dirty laundry in that book because you know he yeah he's the only one that like has personally fessed up to this has made it exactly um, something we know about through any other means other than royal sources so I mean it that's what it's about it's about like kind of showing that they'll they'll never forgive him for for writing this stuff I think Oh, yeah. And I mean, they've said in the past to Tom Sykes and other media outlet through sources that there's so much more that we could expose about Harry that he didn't talk about or touch on in Spare. And I've always thought it was probably that, oh, you didn't just do one line, but you were like a little bit of a cokehead <laughs> at one point. You know what I mean? Like, literally yeah. things like that. You know what I mean? Like, because they've said like, oh, he didn't tell the full story. It's like, it's probably things like that. That Mm -hmm. makes the most sense because, again, early 2000s, party in the club constantly. What were you doing other than drinking? It's not, it doesn't take a lot to figure that one out. But it only gets worse from there. And not just William's friends, but the Windsors come into this too because they are Mm -hmm. not having a normal reaction to hearing about this Columbia tour. Because let's be real, of course, that's what it is. It's a royal adjacent tour. Yeah. So Harry and Meghan's quasi world tour of Colombia is due to begin on Thursday this week. In a statement announcing the tour, the government said that the people were going there in recognition of their global leader- leadership and fostering a safer online environment, adding that this was also part of the goal of a conference dedicated to ending violence against children to be held in Colombia this November. Asked about the state of motivation, the friend of Williams, a Prince Williams, witheringly told the the daily beast i can't imagine online trolling as the biggest risk to children being exploited enslaved and murdered by drug gangs yikes yikes again again the way they want columbia to just be one thing yeah like they really and i feel and the sad thing is they probably really genuinely believe that drugs are the only issues in columbia (laughs) <laughs> that mm. anything outside of that is absolutely ridiculous because it's just about drugs. Like they absolutely no way can be suffering like most Western countries are from what can happen to kids being online too much and what they can be exposed right. to. And I have to remind you guys that William and Kate are supposed to be these advocates for mental health and safe mm. spaces. And this is how their supposed friend talks. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Just the idea, too, that we can't deal with, like, if there's one issue going on, we can't possibly talk about a different one. Like, give me a break. I I don't know. It's just just the double standards, as always, because we have, you know, King Charles going to Africa and never once really addressing the legacy of colonialism or racism. But instead, you know going to lots of other cultural displays and that's completely fine. That's allowed. But 
it's Prince Harry and Meghan doing a visit to Colombia that's the issue. Like, yes. okay. <laughs> exactly. And Windsor Loyalist, as they he names them here, they also have complaints. But I will say theirs is at least what you expect. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. It says, Windsor loyalists have expressed irritation about the trip to the Daily Beast. One source recently told the Daily Beast, I'm afraid it shows the utter con- contempt they have for the king and for very long established ways of doing things. World tours have always, always been about diplomacy, building bridges, and reinforcing friendships on behalf of Britain. This tour may well have the noblest intentions, but it's clearly not being carried out on behalf of Britain, and yet they still basically portray themselves as British royals. It shows you exactly why the royals want to want these two kept away kept as far away as possible who said it's on behalf of britain who said that thank you and you don't like, have to represent britain or the monarchy to have a title like you what? don't have to and they are royals yeah, that's just like, <laughs> like kind of, you guys sound like yeah. trolls like do i really need to explain to the windsors that these guys are still royals he's still in the line of succession they still yeah. have titles like that royal blood in harry did not just evaporate the moment he said it deuces i'm not working for you anymore and the sad thing is is what they really can't say is oh, sorry i'm just like trying to read it and like make sense of it in the next breath they're probably going to laugh at him and say like he'll never be on a royal tour again it's like okay then don't hold him to that standard it just drives me insane yeah and it's also just not wanting to admit that this would be the perfect tour to have right now when they have two of their main players down but because they exile these two so much they can't use them when they they need them so much right now I mean, right. there was another article just talking about, right, how in general the royal family is struggling because their main players are out and no one can get attention like Kate can. The only mm-hmm. other people who can are Meghan and Harry and they don't represent them anymore, but they're still right. out and about. And that's your problem. That's yeah. your problem. <laughs> and it's not their problem. They shouldn't stay inside. If an employee leaves your company and like starts doing a very similar job for a startup, like too bad. That's not yeah. like connected to you at that's, all. <laughs> that's life, baby. And to really just like the cherry on top of this article again of just making Columbia about one thing, which is drugs, he adds mm-hmm. at the end after explaining how Harry has talked about how he uses marijuana for therapeutic reasons, says marijuana remains illegal in many jurisdictions and its production and distribution has been widely linked to gang crime, slavery, and other human right abuses, as well as ecological damage, ecological damage. (laughs) I'm telling you. So, but this article gets even better because you finish this entire thing about Harry and then you realize, Oh, this isn't actually an article about Harry. It's a roundup of all the things going on with the royals. Because right after that, you have William applauds sky high fundraising effort. And it's two paragraphs about William and Uh, this fundraiser he promoted. Exactly. (laughs) Which obviously you have no clue. Oh, please. Oh, my God. Go look. And I'm going to link this, you guys, because you have to see it for yourself. I was truly shocked when I kept scrolling. I was like, wait, that's not it. And then (laughs) to make it somehow even better, he goes, the next article after that is Angela looks ahead to Balmoral Escape. And this is a few paragraphs and it talks about how he's seeing lots of his grandchildren and how he's really sad. He pretty much can't leave the Royal Lodge without getting into a lot of trouble by the media or pretty much by people. Um, And how Beatrice and Eugenie are visiting him a lot at the Royal Lodge because they know he pretty much can't leave and he's stuck there. And of course, those three paragraphs, Tom Sykes is completely neutral. He doesn't show sympathy towards Andrew. He doesn't, criticize Andrew. He's just totally neutral reporting what he's been told. He's far more Mm. neutral when talking about an alleged pedophile than when spending eight paragraphs making Harry out to be a drug lord who's part of the reason why Columbia has drug issues. So when I talk about how much I love Tom, I promise you it's completely and totally sarcastic. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) And then you have King Charles supports anti-racism demonstration. Gets a couple Which, paragraphs there. 
Yeah. I have questions yeah, about that. We will get, we'll to, get that. to it. We will get to that. <laughs> <laughs> and then round it off with a shout out to Prince Anne, who turned 74 oh, on August 15th. It's their newsletter. That's what it is. It's the Daily Beast's like newsletter, but it's masquerading as which, an article. But yeah, okay, see, which like, makes sense why it was free too. Two thirds of it is about Harry. Yeah, that's what yes. it is. And <laughs> the title is all about Harry. So it was that just goes to show you interesting. Like, I recently talked to somebody who writes for um, a news outlet, and they were telling me like, yeah, our you know we're kind of really focused as an outlet on like fashion and beauty content, but it's the royal stuff that keeps the light on. So that's why we keep doing it. And I was like, that makes sense to me. That's the traffic driver. And then everything else that you want to do kind of falls underneath it because the royal stories are bringing in the clicks, right? So that's kind of what they're doing with Harry. Like he's the one that brings in the clicks and then you can nestle in all the other royal stuff and say, look, I did, I did write about Princess Anne Buckingham Palace. You can't be mad at me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like I did, William, I did write about how you promoted this fundraiser and you met your goal. Yeah. See, it's yeah. right there at the very bottom. You know, I stuck you in there. <laughs> so God bless. It's, God bless them. Right. Um, so that, that was fun. Robert Johnson <laughs> makes this a bit more fun and yeah. shows us that William is B-A-N-A-N-A-S bananas. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. he actually had a new book come out recently. It's a called new Catherine, book. the Princess of Wales. Yeah. Heavy air I, This came and went. Yeah, this came yeah. and went fast. I'm surprised how well, little I heard about it. Well, yeah. So it was one of those books that's serialized. And honestly, it sounds like the passages that were serialized in the Daily Mail and all these other outlets were the most interesting parts. Because from what I've heard from people who have bought the book and read the book, it's all either recycled like stuff we've heard before, or it's not actually about Kate because newsflash, we don't know a lot about Kate and I don't think we will until she decides to give an interview or she decides to write a book. I think that's honestly, if you want to talk about the monarchy's secret weapon, I think that's the monarchy's real secret weapon is give a little bit of information about Kate at a very, very like crucial point in time, but not it. He Robert Jobson is not the one who's going to break away from Kate's playbook, which is don't talk about me unless you're talking about these three talking points that I have stuck to religiously for the last 13 years. Yeah. As, yeah. And she has cancer. No one's going to right. say anything groundbreaking about Catherine while she has cancer, especially right. if you will see her in a negative light. It's just absolutely yeah. not going to happen, which is why the most explosive, explosive tidbits are about William. Because as we like to remind people, before Meghan came along and Harry and Meghan became public enemy number one to the royal rota, they did not like William. (laughs) It was shots fired, even if very slyly, towards William constantly. They didn't like his Mm -hmm. attitude. They thought the whales were lazy. They would talk about how they used tours as vacations, would literally be on official engagements and stop the media from coming with them because they wanted private time. It was a whole thing, okay? Yeah. And we're finally getting back to a time where they can't lean on Megan and Harry so much. So very slyly, they take shots at William. Even more sly than before. So this one excerpt was widely circulated. Um, It's talking about the photo manipulation fail that happened when Kate put out a mothering Sunday photo. Or did she? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. So it, it says... Even the White House press secretary mocked the royal couple, giving the U.S. press corps assurances that no images by them would ever be doctored. Despite the clamor, the palace refused to release the original photo, which only sparked further fevered speculation. Close sources say that it was Prince William who refused to budge. His PR team, I find it interesting that it's his PR team and not like Kensington Palace, first of all. Yes. His PR team suggested he and Catherine issue a joint statement to help deflect the blame from her. The initial prepared statement used the words we and our, but the prince decided not to release it. After all, it was his wife who'd manipulated the snap and nothing to do with him. And if the press found out that he was covering for the princess, the speculation would only grow. When the statement was finally issued, it came from Catherine alone. Yikes. (laughs) Big yikes. Big yikes. 
Which is Ooh, what we like, we assumed that this is what happened. Do you remember? We yes. talked about this. Oh, everyone was like, you guys are dicks. I mean, people were yeah. saying they were dicks initially, but then we found out she had cancer. Yeah. And you're like, you threw her under you the bus suck. when she had cancer? Like, yeah. holy crap. And yeah. this is from a March 13th article, um, 2024, from the Daily Mail. It says, Kate Middleton has been thrown under a bus by disgraceful Kensington officials and ungentlemanly Prince William, who let her take yeah. blame for Mother's Day photo blender Richard, e- Richard Eden tells Palace Confidential. So this was hinted at during the time yeah. that William and his team decided to throw her under the bus. This mm-hmm. is why when they started to leak that Kate just wanted to be like, was like, honestly, is the best policy. Like, I'm just going to mm-hmm. face up to my accident. and kind of went with that little stick to like make it seem better. I'm like, was it or was there so much pressure you had to yeah. and then your husband and his team and overall Kensington Palace because at the end of the day William is in charge of Kensington Palace not Kate yeah. decided yeah. to leave you to hang out to dry I, mm-hmm. I mean I still wonder honestly because again you can't really trust Kensington Palace if Kate was the one who did that photo job editing job it was bad enough I can't believe an amateur photographer did it mm-hmm. but I don't know. I wonder. For what reason? I wonder. Like, for what reason did we do all of this? You know? Like, yes. It's just, it's hard. Because at one end, I'm like, I can see someone wanting to be like, Kate, we can't put this photo out. Like, mm-hmm. you've heavily manipulated it. It goes against the PR, the wire services roles. But also, how do you tell your boss, who's also the Prince of Wales, that who doesn't have yeah. a history of always listening to their staff and who has a mm-hmm. husband who will supposedly yell at you and get in your face if you tell his wife no? Yeah. I could see that side, but I could see a side where they had a professional edit it, but they don't want to admit that because it doesn't sound mm. as good. And Kate, again, not even for Kate had cancer, she she can get through scandal pretty easily. Yeah. Because she's beautiful, she smiles, she's thin, she loves her children. She's got three kids. But when yeah. she has cancer, like she can get away with murder. <laughs> like, okay, so yeah. Blame her. I can see William like she's got cancer. She can get away with it. Why put me in this shit? I'm the balding guy, yeah. okay? That no one and like, likes. And I do understand like why that excerpt wasn't picked up. I mean, a lot of we talked about it in our circles, but like a lot of people focused on a different one instead because yes, it it involves Megan. So this one, it's in the same little passage, but it's two different like I got talking points. So um, this one he's writing about. Harry and Meghan's wedding, and he says, By the time William was confirmed as best man, the relationship had worsened. I have been told that, still concerned about the match, he'd sought assurances from the Queen that Harry's bride would not be wearing any of Princess Diana's jewelry, even though his own wife was allowed to wear it. (laughs) Ah! I hope he has a fit every single time he sees Meghan wearing Diana's jewelry Mm. because he now can't Mm -hmm. control that. I just hope it enrages him every single time it happens. Like, Like, what a P.O.S. What What do you mean? So controlling. Yeah. I think that's what this is. It's just control issues needing to be the special boy all the time <laughs> and yes just, needing to be uh, the special boy oh yes and then it rounds it out with at first public reaction to megan was overwhelmingly positive with the new kids on the block hogging most of the headlines to the point that william and Catherine may have unconsciously raised their game they were whispers of pettiness even jealousy Un- thank you unconsciously raise their game i know i was just william i was just respect- emphasizing that like of course it has to be unconscious <laughs> yes <laughs> And this is also to the only part you see Kate kind of brought into this drama that yeah. she may have had feelings to. The That's only time which her. I find interesting, because I don't believe this is the only time. But again, I just well, can't believe Kate can be seen as this. It does make sense that like the framing of this is stuff happens to Kate. She doesn't do these things. Like it's exactly. the passive role. Yes, yes. William, who expected to be treated with de- deference due to his place in the succession, was put out when Meghan and Harry slotted in a morning engagement in Cardiff in January 2018 that clashed with one of his. Competitive by nature, even when it comes to media coverage, he chose that same afternoon to debut a new and dramatic buzz cut during a visit to a London hospital. Um, I remember that. 
buzz cut. Oh, I do. And guess who reported who got that scoop? Um, Tom Sykes? No. God, that horrible little man who's been accused of taking (gasps) advantage of men. Oh, Wooten? What? Yes, Dan got that scoop. Front page of the sun. Yep. Yeah, Dan got that scoop. That was part of the byline investigates. That was one of the scoops he got when he decided he suddenly was going to stop hating William because somehow he had an insight to his team, a.k.a. Christian Jones working for him at the time. Oh, yeah. I'm shocked by this look on William. I blocked this out of my memory. Go, everyone yes, go to the print, print William buzz cut. Because what, sometimes people will say... William, you should just shave it all off and go bald. This is the closest I've ever seen to that happening. And it's not good. And apparently we had it in 2018, which is ironic because that was when Kate's hair was like at its peak, I think. But oh, yes. Wow. Sorry, that was a fun segue. (laughs) My bad. (laughs) Yeah, it was at its peak. William with his butchered haircut, which was shaving off the last three hairs on top of his head. And Kate just looking amazing with her hair. Um, some members of Charles' household were amused that William had felt so affronted. After all, the prince rarely showed much deference to his father. I mean, true. So, yeah, William's a bitch. I mean, that's what it's giving, <laughs> that entire thing. That is what it's giving. And again, we pretend like Kate had nothing to do with any of this. Mm. Which, you have to remember, when Megan came along, she was supposedly beefing with Rose because she was being treated as the top girl and not Kate. And that's why that article that um, Ellie Hall did is so interesting is Mm -hmm. because there's two women in her life at one time who are getting more attention and more power than her when the, when the hierarchy tells her she should be the one on top. And it Mm -hmm. seems like her reaction is pettiness and jealousy, but we're not allowed to talk about that. The press is not allowed to talk about that. So it gets erased very, very quickly. Whether articles are literally being erased or we talk about it in a passive voice. Right. But Mm -hmm. my favorite part of all of this, though, is the Sunday Times review about the book. And Mm. I don't have the (laughs) author's name, but I will link it. And he just makes, the author, the journalist makes so many good points about yeah. why ri- royal biographies in many ways are just bogus, but why mm-hmm. when they're about Kate, they're just really, really awful. Yeah, It says, even so, were it not for the events of 2024, Jobson's book would be nothing but a desperately dull and often comically overwritten hagiography, which portrays Catherine as little less than a secular saint who was put on this earth to study the troubled house of Windsor and to make a stuffy monarchy appear more compassionate and sensitive. Jobson mm-hmm. clearly admires Catherine enormously and always seeks to present her in the most in her in the best possible light. Less so her husband who emerges as grumpy and petulant. From the perspective of a dutiful subject, this may be admirable, but make, it makes his role as an impartial biographer rather suspect. And that is the issue. None of these people are impartial. They all have an agenda. And lately, the agenda has been making them look good compared to Megan and Harry. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And this whole idea of, like, Queen Elizabeth's gone, she's left this big hole in the monarchy, who's going to fill it? And it's almost like biographers are lining up between different members of the royal family to, like, push their favorites forward and, like, make the case for why they should be the monarchy's savior. I mean, we've seen it in a couple biographies of Charles. Um, Obviously, William is doing his own thing. (laughs) But yeah, with Kate, it's it's very interesting because there's, like this review says, there's nothing more to go off of other than what's already been regurgitated over and over and over. And it's over at the point where again. like, there's we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. And the so, sad yeah. thing is I do think they see Kate having cancer as like, oh, she can definitely be our next Queen Elizabeth when it comes to being untouchable mm-hmm. because Queen Elizabeth is untouchable in many ways. She's done some horrendous yeah. things, yeah. but people love her no matter well, what. I also think this is a great time to remind everybody that Kate never said she had cancer. <laughs> she said cancer had been present and she is in preventative yes. chemotherapy. So like it exactly. is the media and the public running with she has cancer. And I find that so interesting. I don't know if it's on, to put her on the same level as Charles, who does have cancer. We just don't know what type. Yes. Um, but like we have kind of conveniently ignored the fact that it's supposed to be preventative treatment. And we are supposed to believe that she's, 
like from what she said, kind of on the road to recovery, you do have people, Tom Sykes is one of them every week writing about how, oh, Kate's more sick than we know. Like you guys don't even know how bad she's suffering. And it's like, I don't know which way to look right now because you're all saying a big bunch of nothing, (laughs) but we're just supposed to take your word about it, word for it, because it's Kate, I guess. I don't know. Yes, exactly. And she's sick, but she's still loyal to her children in the crown. And Mm -hmm. she is the soothing voice and all these Windsor egos. Like, yeah, it's, it's, they need that Queen Elizabeth figure. And it's like, they're like, Kate's the perfect one. But they know that they don't have another like 70 years to prove that to the public. They know they need to get you on her side fast. So you have to like speed run and just insist 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 get it to stick push my narrative um yeah because you have two unlikable (laughs) monarchs on us charles and william you know so it's like yeah we got to make someone close to them just untouchable and kate's gonna be that speed running yeah we're speed running until kate can be queen mother and we have george honestly yeah oh totally but now to talk about something a bit happy <laughs> exciting yeah. surprise Megan and Harry are in Columbia yeah yes. as we're recording they this in- yeah uh, yeah their first day was today um so this got announced what last week I think it was mm-hmm. last week maybe a couple of weeks ago now and they were being announced to go to Columbia so people were kind of like that's random but when you look at it in the point of like Invictus it's not random mm-hmm. Columbia actually invo- in joined Invictus in 2022 and participated for the first time in 2023. This is Mm. similar to Nigeria, which they visited like a couple months ago. They joined Invictus in 2022 and participated for the first time in 2023. All three tours they have done, which includes the Canada, have all been connected Mm -hmm. to Invictus in some way. Yeah, it's Um, fascinating. They're almost building like a new kind of commonwealth like through Invictus, if you think about it in those terms. It's really interesting. they can do a lot with Invictus, which includes being able to shed a light on these countries in a new way, mm-hmm. which is really yeah. exciting. And something else is exciting, too, is that Megan kind of hinted at this with her fashion in the Nigeria tour, because mm. two times, specifically, I'm thinking about her last engagement she did, which was at a polo mat. She wore mm-hmm. Johanna Ortiz, who's a Colombian mm-hmm. designer. And then we hear about Colombia a couple months later. So I just yeah. I really love that. I really love the way that she still is sending messages through her fashion. Yeah. So they have said, though, while Invictus is a part of this, they have talked about they're going there to support mental health activism and safer online environments for the youth. Mm-hmm. And then today, the vice president, she had a press conference and we learned a little bit more. The vice president is Francia Marquez that she had actually invited Megan to attend International Day of Women's and Girls of African Descent at the UN last year. Megan could not attend, but mentioned wanting to visit Columbia. So since last year, they have been getting this trip in the works. So Mm -hmm. we'd love hearing about that. And Megan, she talked a lot about Megan in the press conference, just being really inspired by what she had said actually during the Netflix documentary, which is like how they came on her radar. Mm -hmm. So... Megan fashion deserves a moment because I'll admit I started off my stories today. Like they're going to be there. She better not wear Navy. <laughs> Why are you, okay. okay, I need to know your thought process. Why did you call spoiler alert? She did wear Navy, but like, how were you? She literally it? walked out in <laughs> Navy for the first engagement. <laughs> So I only said that because Columbia is known for like their bright colors and their bright culture. And I was like, mm. if you come in neutral shades, girl, I'm going to kick your ass. But <laughs> she came out in this st- Stunning Veronica Beard, like, um, yeah. pants like suit, a halter but it's, like, suit. It was really cool. Yes, a halter suit. So good. Fitted yeah. to absolute perfection. Navy with gold buttons. It was by Veronica Beard. Absolutely obsessed. Immediately took it back. I was like, okay, I will, mm-hmm. I'll shut up. I'll never say that again. I'm sorry, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> but she did bring some color um when she for a visit to a cultural center the national center for the arts in bogota where they watched they participated in dance class with locals and they watched it looks like a traditional play and performance she wore a brand by again johanna ortiz who is a columbia designer board in cali columbia which is a city they will be visiting there and the dress Mm -hmm. was called the navajo weaver so just an excellent choice for that second engagement 
I, again, really love how she did that. And I love the two that jo- Johanna Ortiz isn't just a designer she's wearing because she's in Colombia, yeah, but it's a designer that say. you can tell she truly loves because she yeah, wore the first worn- time last year, right? I think she has two others that she's worn. Definitely that gold one. And then in Nigeria. Yes. The gold um, one was the first time she wore the brand in 2023. Yeah. So you can tell it's a, what award she was accepting. The, oh, the women award. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The, the feminist award. I, it's escaping me right now. But yeah, you can tell it's a brand that's like really authentic to her and her style to begin with. So like when she wears it, it doesn't feel like out of place. It doesn't feel like she's putting on a costume just because she's in Colombia. Um, it, it does feel nice. And yeah. Yes. Really. And I just, I love, I love diplomatic um dressing i love the messaging that you can get through it and today Mm -hmm. was excellent and so it's been going great so far um it also what i really love too about the veronica beard suit which also made me take back the thing about navy because (laughs) navy is a part of their flag and i literally had said in a group chat group chat Mm -hmm. i'm like watch her wear navy the first time because it's in the flag and her skip out on the yellow and the red for the bright color yeah but it also made sense because they went to a school to go visit students and have a little round table talking about social media and the ways that affected them positively positively and negatively and her outfit and harry's match with the students uniforms which were this dark navy blue so in the pictures it just goes really well together yeah. And as we saw from our banana articles, that the British press have not been acting normal when hearing about this Columbia trip. No. And they have been pushing that Columbia is dangerous and it's drug infested, even though it's very obvious that they want their country to be viewed in a different light. And one of the yeah. people who did that was actually Cameron Walker from GB yeah. News. When it was Sad. announced, he said the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will visit Columbia, which is hosting a conference on ending violence against children. Both the U.S. and U.K. governments advise against all but essential travels to parts of the country. Prince Harry recently said he refuses to bring his family to the U.K. because he cannot keep them safe there. Is Columbia safer than the, than the U.K. for Prince Harry and Meghan? Yes. Spoiler so, alert. <laughs> literally, yes. yes. <laughs> and we got proven why not a week later. Oh my because god. Because yeah. rioting started happening in the UK. So yeah. a little background on this. On July 29th, 29th in Southport at a Taylor Swift themed dance party for children, a 17 year old British citizen entered and stabbed 11 people. Mm. Three children died as a result. Within hours of the attack, misinformation identified the teen as a Muslim and an illegal immigrant that ran yeah. rampant on right-wing social media. Also within hours of the attack, the prime minister made a statement condemning the attack and sending, you know, um, condolences to the family. And immediately right. afterwards, we got mass statements from King Charles and the Wales. Yeah. Charles said, my wife and I have been profoundly shocked to hear of the utterly horrific incident in Southport today. We send our most heartfelt condolences, prayers, and deepest sympathies to the families and loved ones of those who have so tragically lost their lives and to all those affected by this truly appalling attack. The whales said on their, posted this to their social medias, as parents, we cannot begin to imagine what the family, friends, and loved ones of those killed and injured in Southport today were going through. We send our love, thoughts, and prayers to all those involved in this horrid and heinous attack. Thank you all to the, thank you also to the emergency responders who, despite being met with the most horrific scenes, demonstrated compassion and professionalism when your community needed you most. Signed off with W and C. So Mm -hmm. July 30th, a vigil was held for those who died and were harmed in the attack. It was taken over by right-wing, right wing rioters who became violent outside a mosque that was located near the attacks. 20 officers were, were reportedly harmed and a police car was lit on fire. The prime minister, the next day, it may have been that night, but I'm pretty sure it was the next day, immediately condemned the riot, calling the participants thugs. The riots only continued in the coming days throughout England and some parts in North Ireland. They lasted about a week and within days, counter protesters began to pop up, condemning the racism and Islamophobia. And they were like literally centering mosque. And they at one point went to a hotel that was holding holding asylum seekers and literally Mm -hmm. blocked any of the entrances and exits while trying to light the hotel on fire. Like these were violent and they were targeting black and brown people. Yeah. As for the Royals, 
they remain silent throughout the week of the riots. So, and King Charles began to face heat for this, his silence on the British airway. So he immediately began to leak in response. So <laughs> on August 7th, we had a Sunday times article that was pretty much standing up for him, but they did talk about some of the people who were criticizing him. And one was Kate yeah. Williams. She is the pro- professor of public engagement with history at the University of Reading. And she said this would be a moment for the king to talk about multiculturalism, the Commonwealth, people coming together. And I think that if I were advising him, I would suggest making that statement sooner rather than later. Yeah. So he continued leaking. Well, the first leak was to Sky News that we got, which was reports that he was ke- keeping updated on the protests. They call it protests, but they were riots. Let's be very clear. Right. They were riots. Yeah. Um, and then we have a Sunday Times article, which pretty much excused his silence as saying the Queen didn't speak out in 2011 when there were riots and that he was which, waiting on the government. What happened to Charles modernizing the monarchy? Did we forget that that was a talking point here? <laughs> Thank and I you. also... As we're like on the topic, do you remember back when um, the attacks happened in um, Israel and Palestine and Gaza, when William and Kate, I think it was both of them, it might have just been William at that time, he made a point to visit like a mosque and a synagogue and he like met with Muslim people, Jewish people, like it wasn't direct. It was kind of directly stated to be linked to those attacks and the hostage situation, but it wasn't explicitly supporting or against one side or another. You know what I mean? Like there are ways to say you are thinking about this situation critically and you are taking it seriously without being off putting to one side or another. Like also, yes. I know that this this shouldn't be a political thing, right? Like condemning racism and Islamophobia should not be a political stance. The royals hiding behind, we need the government to address this. Like, I don't think this is the time to go there. Um, like, I get it. I get why they're hesitant to, but like also grow a backbone. <laughs> like, please. Well, and be the diverse and modern and inclusive monarchy you keep right. paying lip service about. Right. Because... Yes, exactly on that. Because on August 8th, they once again leaked to the BBC. And they pretty much said that the reason why he hasn't spoken out is because the monarch does not get involved in politics, which is horrendous. Uh, Because like you said, first off, Charles is known for getting into politics. He's gotten in trouble Uh, for it before. So when when he really wants to get into (laughs) politics. When it's about the planet, Alex, come on. sir. (laughs) <laughs> and also when russia attacked ukraine the royal family yeah. was oh, out visiting all ukrainian communities visiting yeah. ukrainian immigrants who were being sent there because of the attack um william went to like the poland border to go visit british soldiers who were fighting helping ukraine and fighting against russia and like you said when everything going on with israel and palestine um in gaza mm-hmm. william actually only visited a synagogue to yeah. condemn anti-Semitism. In those That's statements, right. he never actually talked about Islamophobia. That's so right. it was about even community. then, though. Yeah. Exactly. Community, community or and coming together. But he which does that sound familiar. talked about anti-Semitism. Yes, but yeah. did not talk about Islamophobia. So they will get into things that are quote unquote political. And no, actually, those yeah. things are literally political. We're talking about yeah. war. You're choosing a side. Those things are political. So to, to suddenly say, I can't talk about this because it's political when it's condemning racism and Islamophobia is just truly, truly horrific. Yeah. But Charles, because of mounting pressure, finally broke his silence on August 9th. He put out a sp- statement mm-hmm. through his spokesperson that said, the king expressed his heartfelt thanks to the police and emergency services for all they are doing to restore peace in those areas that have been affected by violent disorder. He had been greatly encouraged by the many examples of community spirit that had countered the aggression and criminality from a few with the compassion and resilience of the, of the many. So he avoids using the words like racism and Islamophobia. And the thing is, Islamophobia, I wasn't too surprised by because the government refused to use the word Islamophobia. And they actually got a lot of criticism because of that. So his statements are supposed to be in line with the government. So if they're not going to say that word, he's not going to say that word. But the government did use the term racism and Charles opted Mm -hmm. out of that. So there's no excuse for that right there. They are, yeah, they're sticking kind of with the playbook. I'm thinking back to when 
there were the bombings at the Ariana Grande concert in Manchester. And that was when Queen Elizabeth was still alive. I think it was 2017. Um, They gave statements then basically the same as this, you know, saying they thanking the emergency responders, saying how horrific it is, expressing thanks, expressing condolences, all of that. But then Queen Elizabeth did visit some of the victims in the hospital from that bombing, which I like yes. distinctly remember because she like said Ariana Grande was a good singer. So, I mean, when <laughs> racism isn't attached to an episode like this, the playbook is very, very standardized. Um, but I mean, I imagine yes. yeah, behind the scenes at the palace, because it has devolved into these violent riots, um, for no real good reason, honestly, other than just racists, like, doing what they do. Like, now we're not going to touch it with a 10-foot pole, which is really, really sad and um, disappointing. Really disappointing. And I will say, I'm not surprised the Wills haven't spoken out. I think the Mm. only reason people are wondering why they haven't is because they immediately spoke out against the attacks, but not have a followed up with a statement about the attacks against... Black and brown people, but they're not the monarch. Charles is, which is why there's so much pressure on him to speak out. So yeah. there is that. But I mean, again, I was surprised that Charles didn't speak out after um, the prime minister spoke out against the riots because they spoke out so yeah. quickly after the prime minister spoke out against the initial well, attack. Alex, they're on vacation. They're in Scotland. They couldn't <laughs> possibly, you know. Yes, that's they sadly, they, okay, that sadly in- is the frame of thought for a lot of these. Oh, like, totally, because they people. haven't visited anyone. And mind you, I didn't expect them to visit while the riots were still happening. The first responders are stretched thin as is planning a royal yeah. visit. It's going to be hard. But it's been about a week, I would yeah. say a little bit more. The 2011 riots, they started doing visits a week after they ended. And I have mm-hmm. a feeling no one's going to do any visits until they're off vacation. <laughs> Which I'm oh, just yeah, like... Sure. You guys I mean, are assholes. <laughs> all, I mean, it's all the better that, like, remember there was that buzz that Kate was going to go to the Olympics? Like, thank God she didn't. Yes. Because if she could go to the Olympics but not visit families of children who were attacked during a Taylor Swift dance class. And I will say, like, Will and Kate's statement is the one that, like, got me the most. Like, I, I appreciated it. It is very, like, formulaic. But you can tell that they put their actual sentiments into it, saying, you know, as parents, this is heinous and we cannot yes. imagine going through this like them showing up would mean a lot and that would go so far like even if they don't say the word racism or islamophobia throwing their weight behind the families of the victims i think would do a lot of good as well yes does that make sense like both are true at the same time for me Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm hoping to see both. I'm hoping to see visits to the victims, the people who survived. And I'm hoping to see visits to the mosque and the and the immigrants who yeah. were attacked, you know, let's, like let's going to go learn. see those asylum seekers that were trapped yeah. inside a hotel that people were trying to burn down absolutely deserve a visit too, you know, and I really hope we see that, that, Charles is sending people out to everybody because they do have power. I got a lot of mixed emotions about whether the Royals needed to speak out. Some saying who cares. Mm. And Mm. these are from British people saying no one cares what their things and others saying no they do and they should be seen because they still do have power. And also pointing out that not all the, and I'm not saying if you're a Royalist you're a right wing extremist but right-wing extremists can yeah. be royalists. So yeah. them seeing their white royals out I, with immigrants, black and brown immigrants, could yeah. go a long way. And they should I just, be seen with them. I just want racists and Islamophobes to feel a little bit of shame. Like, that's what I want. Exactly. And the royals mm-hmm. have the most power to do that. That, like, shaming aspect. Even exactly. if they're not. And at outright you know doing anything to bring that on like we said their presence is enough so yeah and i mean at one point kate was trending because right wingers were using a video of her visiting a mosque being covered up as like look what they do to our woman look what they make them do so if she had the energy yeah it was really ugly she had she didn't have to do that she chose to first of all exactly it would be really nice to see her visit 
these people or mm-hmm. even just send a message of condolences. I keep saying I'm really hoping she'll hop on her Zoom at one point if she's filling mm. up to it and contribute in some way. And it could go such a long way. I was used to spread Islamophobia. Let me debunk that now and talk to these people yeah. with that consideration does and acceptance does require a level of self-awareness that I'm not sure exists among yes. her staff to like set that up. Exactly. But I mean, also like, <gasps> where are the leaks when it comes to something like this, where like, it would be so nice to just hear friends of Will and Kate say they are horrified that their images or likenesses are being used in this way, blah, blah, blah. Like, where are those Thank leaks? Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Like, you don't even have to do something directly. You could leak this and leak mm-hmm. this to Rebecca English and tell her, write a whole article about this, FYI. And she would do it like yeah. that. But, yeah. like you said, they don't want to, I don't think they want to use their, like, what's the term? It's not political capital when we're talking about the royals, obviously, because they're apapolitical, but like political capital. They don't mm-hmm. want to burn their, burn through it to leak something. Exactly. Because like as someone who brought up to me who was British, like, Unfortunately, there is an overlap of right-wingers and royalists, Mm -hmm. and speaking out against this, especially in a particular way, could isolate them, and they might not want to do that. Yeah. So. Yeah. But to wrap up, um, just because it's like, it's August now, and we're kind of coming back to the main feed after a pretty sleepy summer when it comes to royal news. But one story that we did want to cover kind of came out this this summer in July. Um, and that is the Sovereign Grant Report. We're just going to breeze through it really quickly. I did do a video on it on my TikTok. But basically, um, the every year a report comes out talking about how the royal family gets and uses their funds. Um, we found out this year <laughs> that King Charles the monarchy is going to get an additional 45 million pounds um, from the sovereign grant between 2024 and 2025. That's not nothing shady is happening basically very quickly. Um, a lot of land that is leased from the crown estate is producing a lot of profit right now. So a percentage of those profits are going back into funding the Royal family. It's rising from 86 million pounds. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 86 million pounds this year to 132 million pounds in 2025, 2026. So they won't get this money this year. It'll be next year. But they are getting a pay raise, which I, a lot of people pointed out, like, they're also slimming down the monarchy. So why are they getting paid more to, like, presumably do less work? When you read, The Guardian has a good article about this. When you read between the lines, um, basically the funding right now is being used to... Uh, improve Buckingham Palace, to give it a facelift. That's almost done. So in the next couple of years, the percentage that the royals get from the sovereign grant is going to be reevaluated. It does get periodically um, re-examined. They kind of take a look at what money they're getting, what percentage they're getting. Is it appropriate? So that's going to happen, I think, in 26, 2026. But it was also really interesting. In this report, it came out two things. Number one, Frogmore Cottage is sitting empty. Um, after Harry and Meghan renovated it for 2.4 million pounds, nobody's living there. They kicked Harry and Meghan out. It is completely empty. So hmm. that's not great. Great news. <laughs> in the middle of a cost <laughs> of living crisis. Um, so right. people are, you know, obviously pointing out the irony in that. Also, this year, there were more than 2,300 official engagements by members of the royal family in the UK and overseas. That is down from 2,700 last year. So they're doing less work by the numbers and they are getting 45 million extra pounds. So again, not through any like maneuvering of their own. They didn't like scheme to get extra funding. It's just the way that the sovereign grant is shaking out this year. But people are pointing out the irony of that during a cost of living crisis, a housing crisis, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we also learned that 600 pounds, I'm sorry, 600,000 pounds from the sovereign grant was spent on the coronation. Not a cheap party no. at all. Um, so that's like from Jeez. the sovereign report generally. Um, we also had some news about Prince William and his yes. duchy of Cornwall. So we learned a little bit about, they're calling it Prince William's paycheck, his income, um, which comes privately to him from the duchy of Cornwall, which he inherited um, when King Charles became king um this year the estate was worth over a billion dollars when king charles 
basically handed it over to William. Um, and William received $30 million, over $30 million in income from the Duchy of Cornwall. That's not a small amount. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> that's, no. that's a lot I'm of kidding. money. So, and because this is held by the Prince of Wales privately, he is expected to pay income tax on it. In the past, King Charles has voluntarily paid that tax. Prince William is going to continue that tradition. In recent years, King Charles shared that he paid a little more than five million pounds or six point four million dollars um, in twenty twenty one, five point eight nine million pounds or seven million seven point five million dollars in twenty twenty two. William is deciding not to tell us what he's paying in income tax. He just told, or his representatives told the public that he paid an appropriate amount. So I don't know why you would walk that back. Like why, what's the logic for changing up that strategy and not being less transparent with the public? I don't understand. Well, especially again, when you're giving lip service about being modern and I'm going to do things a new way, but I'm going to do things a new way and being modern and more transparent and then walking back something that was actually transparent. I don't get it. (laughs) I don't understand. What, what, what's going on? Like, are you going to be the modern right. king? Are you not going to be him? Right. Because this right. is giving Queen Elizabeth type of secrecy. <laughs> like mm-hmm. Queen Elizabeth, like just... ignoring environmental regulations for her land kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So just a reminder that like the usual. royal family, <laughs> well, that too, <laughs> like the royal family, like they almost... Like everything they do that is a little bit transparent is like kind of up to them. A lot of this stuff they could just decide to stop being so transparent about if they really wanted to. And I think that's worrying, honestly. Oh, totally. Because you have people like William who say, actually, I'll opt out and just trust my word. Just, yeah, take my word for it. (laughs) Okay. And (laughs) if you would say so. But. But we're glad i'm glad to be back back. this was fun yeah (laughs) this was great it's like a fun little session gossip session vent session of everything royals yes and i hope you guys enjoyed it yeah if you liked this head on over to the patreon it only gets better from here takes only get hotter from here (laughs) so and make sure to like and leave a comment yeah thank you so much